Welcome back to another episode of the Executive Code Podcast. Um, you're very welcome to join us here on this podcast. What we talk about here is all about life purpose and personal mastery. And no better guest to have on our podcast this week than the very own Kevin Carton. Um, so let me give you his official bio before Kevin starts to talk and let us let him tell us a little bit about his story. So as a speaker, teacher and transformational life coach, Kevin Carton specializes in empowering people to live their soul's purpose. With almost a decade of experience, Kevin has spoken on stages in front of thousands of people, which led to him being described as the young Bob Proctor and the next Tony Robbins. He shares weekly insights, inspiration and motivation on his podcast called Science and Spirituality, which has over 800,000 downloads and listeners in over 100 different countries. If you're looking to increase your clarity, amplify your confidence and achieve your next level of success. Kevin can help you get there. Kevin, thank you so much for being on the Executive Code podcast. Of course. And likewise, thank you for having me. I'm really thrilled to be here. Well, let's let's have a, a really, really cool conversation because as we were just chatting before, um, we, we started to press the record button. Um, and I was on Kevin's podcast back in last February and I'm absolutely thrilled that we've kept in touch and you're you're actually joining me on, on my cast. So it's brilliant that you're here and thank you so much. And um, just a little bit of, am I allowed to share that news that you... Yes, please. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so Kevin is actually, he's recording his podcast, but he's actually getting married in nine days time. Is that right? Yes. September 30th, 2022. September 30th. So this podcast will be just releasing, I think, just before you get married. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Yeah. So listen, it is, you have no idea how this universe works. So it's, it's brilliant that you're here. Um, Kev, for, for our listeners, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your story, and what, what has led you to do the work that you're doing now? Sure. I, I think it really stems back for, I, I feel like this is my entire life that I believe that there's a reason that I am here, but I also believe that for everyone else, whether someone knows that consciously or not, I believe that each one of us are here at this time in human history for a purpose, not just to live, not just to make money, to have a good job, but to make a difference in the world. And I felt that from a young age, which is why I, I chose as my career path when I was 17, I chose to be a pharmacist. That was my, my initial choice, but it was soon after I went to school for about four years, but I was on my way to getting my doctorate. And I started working at a community pharmacy, got into that work. And I started to realize that that work was not really my purpose. And it really stemmed from just seeing people month after month after month, coming back with the same health issues, despite what medications we were dispensing as pharmacists. I was a pharmacy technician at the time. So not like with my doctorate yet, but I could see that. And I've worked there for about a year before I had this, this kind of like a middle, a more a quarter life crisis, I call <laughs> probably even less because I was, I don't know, 20, 21 when I had this realization. And I felt like at that point I lost my purpose because I thought that that was my purpose for some years. And so I, I went back and forth of whether I should stay in that, that path, that career path or leave for several months which caused anxiety. I felt extremely alone because my parents didn't understand why I wanted to leave. None of my friends understood why I was even considering leaving that path because it was a good career path, very prestigious, good salary when you graduate with a, a doctorate. And it, it was I, I just like a 97% job rate, like getting a job like after graduating from that school was that. But my heart, it was just telling me no, it was not the path. And so, I, I mean, that was now a little over eight years ago that I made that decision, but I wouldn't change it for the world. But that, that sent me on this whole entire path of self-discovery and also discovering what really my purpose is here on this planet. And I, I started to notice that like, I felt the calling to more like personal development, helping people grow because I wanted to grow myself. And I got connected with my mentor and now I've been studying with her for over eight years, but it really began out of kind of a way of desperation of needing uh, needing help to get out of what I felt like a dark time in my life because I felt lost, like I said. So that's what started me on this path, but I didn't know I wanted to be a coach. I didn't even have a dream of starting a business until a couple of years after I graduated. Like I got a four-year degree, I didn't, but I didn't get my doctorate. So I made a really scary, difficult decision to leave. 
uh, even despite everyone's doubts and worries and like, Oh, what are you going to do? Or is that smart? But I, I knew it was, it was the best choice for me at the time, but that, that is what began my journey. And then there's, you know, I mean, years of, of story behind that of where I am at now and starting my coaching business and all, but it really stemmed from that, knowing that just at a deep level, what, like what I was doing wasn't the path for me. And I think a lot of people face that because most people are not doing work that they love. And we can get into this for sure. I, I personally believe that work that we love is aligned with our purpose because life itself wants growth. Like that the life, the universe itself is for expansion, greater expression, fullness, more life itself by means of itself. We see that in literally any plant life that it's pressing through to its next greatest growth. Like even pine trees, for example, simple example, but very powerful to see that in the spring they have new growth and it's a brighter green at the edge of that needle because it's that newness of growth for itself. And we have that same kind of desire, that same kind of pull within us. And for me, I just started to answer that kind of pull of like what I would love. And that then has led to helping others in living their purpose. Wow. Wow. Brilliant. There's one thing I want to tease out from, from that, Kevin, and that sure. because I know so many of our listeners are going to be saying, okay, how on earth did you, did you make that transition? How did you take that leap of mm-hmm. faith? I, I'd love yes, you yes. to go a little bit deeper into that from point of view of like that, you know, where, where other people are saying, like, Kevin, what are you doing? Do you, <laughs> you're changing your career path. What, what on earth are you doing? You're, as, as you say, the success rate of getting a, 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 you know, a well-paid job after your doctor would, would have been huge. Yes. Um, so people are on that journey from the perspective they're following a career path and they're doing perhaps what they feel is expected of them in, in some respects. And even there might be people that are making a, a decent income from, from the career path that they're doing, but something is dying inside. Yeah, Something's yeah. not being fulfilled. Take us a little bit deeper on that journey for you in terms of, for, and I'm more looking from, from our listeners perspective in the sense of them experiencing what they're currently perhaps experiencing right now at the moment and having a confidence to, to take that leap of faith. What, right. What did that look like for you? Well, first off, like I said, it was, it was some time, like I, it was several months of the back and forth. So I don't think it's, it's something that it's like a flash of inspiration that it's like one day and then you've decided and you're good to go. And that the uncertainty or the fear or the doubt is not there anymore. I've heard a great quote where it says that courage is not taking action without fear, or in other words, being fearless, but courage is being willing to take action despite the fear. So the fear is still there. So I think it really, like the core of it has to do with our tolerance or our level of ability to allow those kind that kind of discomfort and that we're willing to take steps anyway, even if it's a simple step, you know, for, for me that over those several months, the simple steps that I was taking was at first having conversations with others like that. It was even scary alone to even let my parents know that I didn't want to continue to get my doctorate. Same thing with letting my parents know, or sorry, my friends know, and just having those conversations. And I I was looking for support. I was looking for kind of validation externally, but I think actually it's good that I didn't get that of someone saying, yeah, that's okay. You can leave because I know I wouldn't have grown as much as I did if I had that kind of support from everyone. Like if everyone was saying, yep, you could do that. Absolutely. But in fact, the doubts from others, in essence, I allowed that kind of to stoke the fire of the the decision that that I eventually made over the months. So I think it's honestly really perception really is a big thing. It's our mental faculty of perception because I could have over time taken all of those doubts externally and then allowed those to diminish that kind of fire that I had within me to that my heart was saying, like, do something else, which I didn't even know what else that was, by the way. I didn't really have a vision of what I could do besides pharmacy. I just knew pharmacy wasn't for me. So I, I it's two things actually then. So it's the perception, but I also realized that also that it's the discontent, that, that, that power in the discontent with where I was at I was not happy. So I allowed that to push me to make a decision, which I think discontent or our, uh, our pain gets a bad rap because we all, all want to live a life where we're just free, happy, 
joyous, abundant, right? But and then so therefore we we kind of shun those experiences that we have where we feel that deep pain or discontent. But I believe it can be one of our greater greatest motivators. So it's so having the perception that like, oh, the other doubt that doubt, doubts outside of me can help stoke the fire of my dream or what I would really love, but then also acknowledging the pain that I was in. I, I think that was a helpful thing to continue moving in the direction that I wanted to move. So, so you transmuted that pain in effect into the motivation factor of, of finding something where, where you wanted to get into. And exactly. I, I, I totally agree with you, Kevin, in terms of that, that one-sided view of life in terms of any, everything has to be nice and rosy in the garden. It's, it's a fantasy. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. fantasy can, can lead to a huge amount of, of suffering and depression. Yeah. Um, so how, how did you find your your path in terms of now to, to roll forward to to the work that you're doing how how did you find what what it is that you were to do great question and i i always pointed to one particular thing i did which was get support i know if i didn't have the opportunity to work with my mentor who i've been working with literally every week now since 2014 so over 8 years I almost actually nine years now, I would not have been successful in the transition period, I think, because there was still like, even after I made the decision to leave and then went on with getting different jobs, like in different industries and just trying th- different things out, I, I probably would have given up on that pursuit for what really resonated with me. Cause from a young age, I realized that I was, I'm a teacher. I, I speak, I know I speak well, I know I can take information that is very complex or broad and then help people understand it in a very simple way. So that I always knew, but how that that was going to come through and what I was going to teach or anything like that, that wasn't sure. So having support, so working with a mentor, a coach, someone to help me see what I can't see. And first and foremost, my, my weaknesses, the things that I need to work on and change, but then also that a coach, a mentor to help pull out from me, my own unique genius. I believe that every one of us has unique genius. We all have gifts. We have to just activate them. And so having support was immensely helpful. I couldn't have done it without my mentor, 100%. Good. What's, what's this, from your perspective, what's, what's the starting point for personal mastery? Hmm. Starting point for personal mastery. I think it actually comes with curiosity. Like that, that, I think, has been a core of my journey for years now. It's just being curious. Because I had to be curious of like, hmm, interesting. I'm I'm feeling some pain or discom- just discontent with my path in pharmacy. Like, and actually being curious about that because again, most people suppress that. It's like, oh, I should just be grateful for what I'm where I'm at. I got a you know a good path. I I've been doing this for years. At least that was my story and what I would tell myself. But just allowing that curiosity to open up, just I think personally for me helped me go into the the steps that I needed to take to then discover my own level of mastery for myself in my life. And it's, it's funny because you're, you're referencing to, to something there, which I'm correlating with because I originally trained as an accountant, but I no longer do accounts. Yeah. Uh, and, and you were going down the, the science route. Yes. And so, let, and let me just touch on something because the, the title of your podcast is science and spirituality. Yes. And normally those two things don't go together. <laughs> so. Right. How did you how, how did you come to terms with um the the scientific side of your of of you yeah, versus yeah. this more spiritual side? T- right. Talk to us a little bit about that journey and, and where where does where, from your perspective where, where does spirituality sit when it comes to personal mastery? Great question. I think it actually is the core of it, like underlying foundation. I think spirituality is because. Anything that is created in this universe, I believe, comes from one source. Many people call it God. Others call it the universe. A science now is actually calling it a unified field of energy. And so our quantum physics is now speaking to what spiritual teachings or religions, sometimes you can go into the deeper depths of pretty much any major religion. They speak to deep spiritual principles and, and laws of the universe. It's all, I believe, one. And so talking about personal mastery or the science of what we see and what's now quote unquote proven by certain studies and and the rigor of a scientific process, all of that is, I believe, coming from 
our deeper core of us being spiritual beings, that we are souls. We don't have a soul. We are a soul. And all of that, I think, comes through in our human experience, which then we use our logical mind to, to probe and to look into the universe and see what's real. And I put air quotes around what is real because, again, quantum physics has now been proving is like, hmm, what we think of as real is maybe not so real. Like one of the, if anyone's curious of what I'm even meaning by that, and I'm not sure, Paul, if you know of this, there, there's a, a study that was done. It was called the double slit experiment. And yeah, that was like, it was like a, a cornerstone of what began like the whole field of quantum physics. But the basis of that is that what we think of as matter, like electrons that make up our physical being, our body, as well as all the material world around us, it's literally just only in actual matter when we observe it. Yeah. That's what that proved. It's in, it's crazy. So it's, 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 it's amazing when, when that's shown as, as proven. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's insane. I honestly, like I, I understand it to a degree, but also I don't think there is a way of understanding it fully because <laughs> by using the mind, you know? So anyway, digressing from all of that to your question, again, to ground that point, I believe all of what we're discovering and what we study in science comes from a deeper depth of what is the creation of this entire universe. And let me give you one other example of that. Cause again, me being a scientific mind, like I've studied science a lot. I had been a bigger belie big believer and I still do in the big bang theory, which is still a theory technically, because there's no way of technically proving that. Cause that was billions of years ago, but it all came from one infinitesimally small point of matter. And then just at a one time, just boom, it just exploded into all that we know now, including ourselves. So that to me sounds like, hmm, it came from all one point, one source, right? So that could also be termed as God, source, in the infinite, the universe, whatever you want to call it. So I, as I shared, is like as a teacher, one of the things I love to do is bring these big, complex subjects into simple matters. And so when I started to see more of the patterns of life, I realized, interesting, I believe that now science is now just an emanation of who we are as spiritual beings. So it's, it's one and the same. It's just that so often that we think that it's different because there's so much depth that you can go into in both realms, both science and spirituality. I, I think it's, it, I think it's phenomenal to be able to have that, that scientific curiosity, just as, in terms of the sense of that logic, because you, we, we want to make sense of it. Yes. It's not just taking blind faith, which is what we've you know we, we we've all gone through for for decades mm -hmm. and just accepting what is to be or what's been taught yes. and i think that that really deep logical curiosity to to really figure things out and really look for the proof for one better word as much proof as you possibly can yeah and um, because bottom line is you can't see energy but but you, you can definitely see the effects of energy yes. but it's it really gives a really grounded understanding of the pure essence of spirituality. Mm -hmm. well what said. For, for for people to let, let, let let's let's dive a little bit deeper here because for, for for people to connect with their um their inner source, their inner divine, where where would you suggest people go? What 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 do you think people should do? Because it it is it does all form part of Purse mastery, which is a gang, which is what all this yes. podcast is about. So, what for for people to to connect with that inner divine um, source within themselves? Mm -hmm. what, what what would you say, Kevin? <laughs> That's a very broad question, very no. difficult to answer to. <laughs> and the reason not. why, oh, but it's a brilliant question because obviously someone listening would be like, "All right, well, what is? How do I begin? Or how do I continue? How do I take that next step for myself?" It's my answer will be. Uh, challenging, I think for some, but I think for some others would be like, oh, I get that and why I would say this, but it really depends because there's so many different paths that you could take to discover and connect within. But personally for me, what has worked and worked well is two main things. First, meditation. Meditation has opened up my mind, opened up my heart more than anything I've ever done because it gives that space for you to go within to be able to discover that path for you. I don't think there's ever one particular path that it's like, if you do this, then it's going to be 
a hundred percent perfect and you're going to open up, you're going to discover who you really are. You're going to develop mastery. I don't know if there's ever a technical one path for everyone. Everyone has their own unique path because we're all unique, but meditation, I believe for me, or in other words, a stillness practice is just so powerful for me. That met, that looks like sitting down, closing my eyes, deep breathing and tuning into just myself. But for others, like my brother, he is not that great with meditation where you're sitting down and closing your eyes for him. His meditation is taking walks in nature without his phone, turning off all distractions and just tuning into the beauty of the nature around him and, and being there, being present. So there's different forms of meditation, but the practice of getting quiet, being still, and not allowing the mind to take you somewhere else. Cause that I think is what we are challenged with the most this day, these days, especially with how technology has grown. And so there's access to information all the time. There's all notifications and pings and dings and we're, oh, we have so much coming at us. So to take that time to go within is essential, I believe. So that's the first thing. The second thing kind of goes along with that, but, and you can, I think, combine the two, but the other thing is to listen to your intuition or, and the way I've heard the intuition described is that it's a still small voice within. And that I believe is what I was listening to. It goes back to also the, the key of curiosity, but I was listening to that when I started to notice the discontent rise up around my path of being a pharmacist. And so my intuition was speaking to me, it didn't make any logical sense, but I felt it was right. I could just sense it. Some call it, some people call it a gut sense. Sometimes it's not even a thought or a words or insight that you get in your mind, but it's just a, a gut feeling, a hunch, There's so many different labels and names for it, but we all have access to that. And a final thing I'll say about that. There's a great quote by Mahatma Gandhi. He says, the voice for God, or in other words, voice for truth. I call it the intuition. It, it speaks to us every single day. And it as, is as loud as our willingness to listen. Well, yeah. Yeah, totally, totally. And it's, it's funny because as, as you're going through each of those, Kevin, in terms of meditation and, and, and the, the advice you were given, I was actually asking myself, okay, Paul, what would you answer that question? <laughs> right. Yeah. What would you say? I know. I'm curious. Yeah. But, but honestly, I, I was reminded of, because I was trying to figure out, okay, so what, what was the turning point for me in relation mm. to uh, this pursuit of, the, of journey? And I actually remember going, I remember a moment, and I remember distinctly where I am. And I, I, I asked a question. And for one better word, I asked a question in terms of, you know, again, let's just use whatever terminology feel people feel comfortable with, whether it's God, higher power, right, universe, whatever the terminology is. But my question was, show me. Mm. And I went along those lines in terms of, you know, bring forth the people that are to guide me. And um, what what am I to learn? So I, I for one better word, I had a conversation. And it's funny, that conversation has continued ever since. And I talk about our intuition and are unconscious and, and and that absolute infinite intelligence yes that we all have access to i mean we all have access to um but it's it's a two-way street it's not just mm. one way it's not you're dictated to do here's what you got to do it's 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 literally having that conversation um and where that conversation has to start in some respects is trusting yes trusting that you know you're going to get the answer trusting that you know you're going to get that that intuitive nudge of what what the next step is, um, and it's it's it is actually about building that building that trust and building that conversation, and being guided by as you say, Kevin, being guided by your intuitive side, your gut feeling side, to literally go where where you're being guided. Yes. Um, yeah. See, we never know where this conversation is going to go. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, but what 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 do you feel people are doing wrong mm. when, when it comes to per, again? You know, we're, we're all about personal mastery. So, what 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 is it that you feel people are doing wrong? This is uh, going to be quite a paradox. My answer, because my first, and this is, I think, what we all struggle with from time to time, even myself, and I think even my mentor who has been studying developing herself for fifty plus years now is making ourselves wrong. And let me, let me share what I mean by that. 
Because what you asked is, what are people doing wrong? I believe at the deepest core is that we think that we're doing something wrong. It's the thinking. Like My way of saying this is that the problem that we actually face is never the actual problem. The problem we actually face is our thinking about the problem. Because as soon as we think that we're doing something wrong or that we're not in the place we need to be or like, oh, am I missing something or am I not good enough? Then that becomes our reality because as we believe, so it shall be done unto us. And so that (laughs) we have to really start to question, ask, hmm, where is that thought coming from? Where is that, that kind of judgment coming from? Usually it's just coming from our ego, needing to know all the answers like you mentioned before about the, the practice of trusting and that intuition that the answer is going to come to us. But as soon as we start to make ourselves wrong, then we're going off in a direction that we don't then, or we're not able to actually receive an answer. Mm-hmm. So it's actually not so much like, I, I'll give you an example to maybe ground this more. When I was making that decision to leave pharmacy, I think I struggled a lot over months because I felt like I wasn't making the right decision if I left. I was making myself wrong, even though I, I knew what I wanted. I knew what direction I really would love to take my life. But that turmoil within came from me questioning, me thinking that the problem was, oh, me wanting something different. The problem was, oh, like I, I, shouldn't, I shouldn't be feeling this. I should just be grateful for what I have. And we're not, in essence, listening to that deeper sense of knowing, that intuitive voice, that, that, that connection with our higher power. And so we spend days, weeks, months, sometimes many, 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 for many people, years, quote unquote, off track. And it's only because of our thinking. We're technically on track, no matter where we're at in life, because there's always, always, always an opportunity for something new in the day that we're in. There's always an opportunity for growth. And that really is, I believe, the purpose of life is growth. So it's not about achieving something or getting somewhere. Because even heck, like I feel like it was a couple of years ago, because I've been running my business now for five years, a couple of years ago that I, I had this realization, I was like, oh, I feel like I've made it because my business has been running well. I've been doing what I love. I've I had amazing things happen or I created in my life, like attracting love in my life. I'm getting married too soon. I, things have been going really well in my life. And then, which, is, which was interesting, that realization of like, oh, I feel like I made it. Like things started to go quote unquote wrong. <laughs> Cause like, I felt like I, I had reached a point and that I'm good. Like, I don't need to grow anymore, that there's nothing for me to do anymore. And that was a complete unconscious thing. It wasn't like I was, you know, consciously thinking like, Oh, I'm done. I'm good. Like everything's fine. I don't need to do anything else. But in an unconscious way, I was like, Oh, I've made it. And then I start things started to, I started to coast in essence, in essence with life. So even when things are going well, it's my thinking. That's the problem. Not the actual problem. Yeah. Yeah, really, really, really cool, cool. What, what's, in order to, because it's, it's something you referred to earlier on as well, in terms of you've been working with your, your your mentor for, what, eight years, is that right? Yes. And people think that personal mastery is, is an overnight thing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but what, what do you think makes, uh, what what do you think makes real progress when it comes to personal mastery? What, what? What can, because everybody's looking for that quick pill. They're looking for the, the fast track approach, which mm-hmm. just doesn't not exist when, when, it, when it comes to the, this, this side of things. What, but, but, to, but people can make progress. Yes. What, what, from your perspective, what, what will help people make real progress? Hmm. I, I think it comes back to what I was just saying before about our thinking about like where we're at and really the thinking is just a problem. I think what really helps people make progress, including myself, is to celebrate. Literally just celebrate the progress you are making. Because there's a, and another way of saying it is praising. There's a brilliant teaching that I got from Bob Proctor. If you look at the word praise, in the word praise is the word raise. So when you praise, or in other words, celebrate, in this case is your progress yourself in the day that you're in for whatever progress you made, then you're raising yourself up. You're raising your energy, your vibration, your perception of yourself, your own self-image, self-esteem, whatever you want to call it. And then that actually lifts us to the next level of the personal mastery. So to make real progress, 
is to celebrate the current progress you're making, no matter how small it is. Because think about also like a, uh, the growth of a, an oak tree, the brilliant example it comes from a small, very tiny little acorn that has all the potential within it to become the mighty oak dozens of years later. But when that acorn is planted, it's actually in the right amount of soil, the nutrients, the right amount of water, darkness, light, it sprouts. That first growth in maybe a year or two years is maybe just a couple inches, maybe a foot or two. It's not much compared to the mighty oak it will become. But if it was not quote unquote celebrated, and if it was say like shut down or like stomped on, it's like, oh, that's not, that's not good enough. Then it would never grow to its fullness. So it's the same thing with us. It's just that so often we think, oh, I need to be somewhere until I got to get to that accomplishment, that level of mastery, even after months or some years, which it gets, I think, more subtle and more challenging as the years go by and you're developing yourself because it's like, oh, I've got this. But really, like when you get that thought of like, oh, I got this, I know this, I'm, I'm, I've got that level of personal mastery, that actually is stunting our growth because we feel like we've made it. Yeah. <laughs> It's nuanced there. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing, the next challenge shows up. <laughs> yes, exactly. And then it's like, wait, oh my gosh, I don't have this. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so good. What? Um, okay. Look, we, we, we could we could talk for hours, Kevin. We could honestly talk yes. for hours. Um, and in case I haven't asked a, a really good question to really get to the nut of what would really help our listeners. But if, if, if there was one thing that would make a significant difference that perhaps we haven't shared as of yet, what would what would that one thing be for for our listeners? Hmm. I think personally for me is to ask the right questions. That is really essential and powerful because we all and it's usually an unconscious process that we ask ourselves questions about what progress we can make or how we can develop ourselves. But usually the types of questions that we ask ourselves are to a degree limiting. I'll say. Because we all have programming, we all have current patterns. That's just the nature of being human. Uh, I don't believe that we'd be able to be human if we didn't have some level of programming and patterns because most of our lives are lived through our subconscious programming or subconscious mind. But when we begin to ask ourselves more higher quality questions, then we start to open up in greater degrees. We, we start to unfold in our own level of personal mastery and growth. And one of my favorite ways of asking a particular question that is very calibrated or a high vibration is connecting first and foremost with the life that we'd love to live, the results we want to create, the greater vision for the life that we know that we have within us, we have that potential for. And then my favorite question, question to ask, if I can give just one simple one, is to ask yourself, who do I need to be in order to create and welcome that life or those results? Who do I need to be? Because our beingness influences every single action that we take, whether we realize it or not. And I can say like, I, I'm going to be enthusiastic today, or I'm going to be grateful today. And it's a work. There's a process of actually embodying that level of beingness in a day, but that will influence every single action I take. And for example, I, I do that practice for myself every morning. I ask myself, who do I need to be today? to take the next step in my own growth or to connect with my vision and embody that and bring that forth today. And I wrote it down today. Today, my beingness, I'm going to be forgiving and proud of my progress. Go figure. <laughs> We've been talking about that. And that's literally what I told myself today. I'm being that today. That's a really great question. That's a really good question because there is such a, a much, much deeper understanding to, to that then is at first glance for, for, for people. So it's, it, it's about being. So what do you need to be to today? Great, great yes. question. Thank you so much, Kevin. Um, how is, what, what's the best way for people to connect with you, Kevin? Well, first and foremost, definitely uh, my website, kevincarton.com. And I actually was thinking about this today because I've had this uh, amazing workbook that I have created that, um, I often don't even think of, because it's been years now since I've created it, but I often forget, honestly, myself, like the power within it, but just a couple of people have gone through it recently, but that they can find on my website. It's called the Soul purpose blueprint. In other words, creating a blueprint for the life you'd love to live. So that is something that is free. People can download, but my website, people can connect with me on to check out that guidebook, or even just shoot me a message. There's a contact me button on there. And then me and my brother's podcast, 
uh, that I co-host with my brother, Chris, it's called science and spirituality. As you shared in the beginning, that's on any major platform. And there's a great episode with you there. So if your listeners want to check that out and then, uh, the final place you can find me is Instagram. Uh, my Instagram handle is Kevin F Carton. And I often show up there and share more. Brilliant. Excellent. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put all the, the links in the show notes, Kevin. So at least our, so in case our listeners are driving or doing some sort of activity that they uh, can't take a note on right now at the moment, um, those links are going to be in the show notes. So um, by all means, get in touch with Kevin. If if there is some that has particularly resonated with yourself, there's lots of resor- different resources that Kevin has, as he's already mentioned, in terms of the, the workbook that he has. The, the podcast, there's you can make in contact with him through his website. Um, it's kevincarton.com. Um, thank you so much for, for being on our show today, Kevin. Thank you so, so much for, for the knowledge and just a really, really great conversation to have. And for our listeners to help them on their journey for a, um, a, a successful personal mastery. Yes, there will be challenges. There's no doubt there will be challenges in your life. But there is always challenges and with challenges comes growth. So we're here to share as much information as we possibly can in relation to discovering your own individual unique life purpose and for your journey on personal mastery. If you want to find out more about myself, head over to www.paulwilliamdavis.com. Again, those show notes, those links are going to be in the show notes. And you can also watch this um, video podcast on our YouTube channel. And again, the show notes are going to be in, in, in our, the links. I do send backwards, Kevin. Why am I sending all backwards? Those links are going to be in the show notes. But until next time, I wish you every success. 